Uh, we know uh, we got a lot of firepower on our team. You know, when, when, when we go down 10, 15 points, coach always says we can get back in in a second. You just got to play defense and get stops. You know? Seems like when the defense concentrates on stay, uh, Steph and Clay, you guys getting backdoor layups, you and the Eagle Dow. How, how do you guys keep that going for game three? Like, you know, Steph and Clay deserve a lot of attention from the other team, and they get trapped a lot. So we uh, used to catch the ball in the pocket. You know, they always tell us to be aggressive and, and make the right play. You know, uh, we got guys like Andre and Draymond, who's some of the smartest players in the league. So we know on the backside of the big, you know, if we in the right spot, we're going to score. When you're a threat out there, it'll open it up for another guy who the other team wouldn't quite uh, give as much respect to. You know, you kind of pick and choose your poison. And uh, our system with the way the ball moves and the way our shooters are a threat, uh, we have guys who take advantage of those situations and opportunities that come their way. Most people on, on this team were on the team last year, so we understand like what, what it feels like to win a uh, NBA championship. Um, so we know when it's time to step up, my name's called, we got to produce. Taking care of business at home is one thing. They did it without KD. Could be longer. I want to get to the Portland side in a second, but let's start speaking of bigs. Look, He's been so huge, Kevon Looney. <clears throat> Not just the minutes, B. Wood. He's stat stuffing. Assists, second chance opportunities, offensive rebounds. How impressed have you been with his play? I've been very impressed. Kevon Looney has been somebody that's continued to get better and better every year. You can tell he's gotten his body in a lot better shape than when he first got into the league. And I think the fact that he's gotten in a better shape has allowed him to play harder, longer, and he's able to go out there and make a lot of those hustle plays. Some of those plays that might not be on the highlights or things of that nature, but he gets a lot of offensive rebounds, keeps balls alive, is constantly in the right position and he's done an excellent job hedging out and switching and screening roles and he's been very challenged because this last series Houston Rocket series and then now you look at this series uh, right that we have right now Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum mm -hmm. he's had to switch out of some very very talented guards and he's held his own out there and Smitty that was the kind of thing we were talking about right with Collins and Cantor all those second not so much through the first two games it hasn't just been about the guards so as a whole you're going home mm -hmm. they've played better at home What's the mindset for you if you're thinking on a positive light about what tells you Portland still is in this series? Well, I think you go as your leaders, and they still look confident, C.J. McCollum and also Dame Lillard. And for me, for the Portland Trailblazers, I need a third guy, not what everybody say in the media, to score. I need a third guy that can make the next play. And I think that's where Golden State has Draymond Green. It's the next play and the right play. And that's where I think maybe Evan Turner, a little bit young and Zach Collins, but I want to see the third guy make the, the right play to make them pay for doubling Dame and Damian Lillard and, say, and C.J. McCollum. Yeah, C.J.'s had a couple of great games, including obviously that one fantastic one, but we know Dame looks at this as, hey, look, I've got to play better. It's on me. You know what that feels like. If you're sitting there in that kind of a situation, you haven't really shot the ball as well last three, four games. What are you trying to do if you're Dame Lillard to get yourself in the mode where you can have more success? Well, it's interesting because you, you look at it uh, like in the Boston series, you know, with Kyrie, you know, he said, I should have taken 30 shots. He took 22 Oof. because you're thinking to yourself that you need to do more. But really what you got to do is come more to the team. And I think with uh, with uh, with Dame and with McCollum, it's not that they need to do more and they need to take more shots. It's just making sure that they bring the rest of the team with them early in the game. They need to make sure they execute, make sure that they don't, you know, you're taking tougher shots leading to that, that, that missed shot is the first pass to the, to the fast break. So they just have to make sure that they don't turn the ball over and they get off to a great start and build a rhythm so the team is on a court. You may have to take a shot in the fourth quarter, but not early in the first two. Give yourself a chance. You're at home. Young guys, you know, typically play better at home. So, you know, I, I like their chances. All right, we've got more coming up. Yeah, still pretty to watch. Release, rotation, the splash, and the top spot. When you look at three-pointers made, and uh, look, Apparently, Kyle Korver going to work here soon because I see Reggie, Jason mm. Terry. I mean, we're just trying to bring everybody in. Steph, yeah. we'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is, and I want you guys to kind of chat, when you sit there and you look at 
the league now. Everybody trying to shoot a three-pointer. And we talk about Ben Simmons. I know it's in a different series that happened already, but if you were talking to guys who were learning to shoot the three, trying to get better at it, what are some of the do's in the do's and don'ts, things you must learn and acquire? Oh, I, I talk to the kids about this all the time. I think the, the first thing that I do when I walk into a gym is I start inside the paint and I work my way out. <clears throat> you got to be a great free throw shooter. Every routine that I go through, I mix it in with, with five free throws. Everything, because I, I think about my bigs. I'm coming off a pin down, you know, turning my feet towards the basket. So the most important thing about my shot is my legs. So getting my legs into the shot and working on my release from the, from the free throw line. Once I start building that small little rhythm, everything I do inside, now I duplicate it on the perimeter. And my legs are the same every shot. I want to make sure I do everything from that side to this side to that side and making sure my release is the same, which means my jump has to be the same. Ray, one of, one of the things that I see that you did very, very well in your game that I really love, well, I hate it when I played against you, <laughs> you were constant motion and you did a great job of getting open. We can kind of compare that to what Clay Thompson does right now. I think your guys' games are very, very similar. Yeah. What did you look for when you were trying to get open, setting guys up? What were your keys to getting open against good defenders on that baseline to get off some of those good threes? Well, it, it's important to set your man up uh, because a lot of times <clears throat> I'm starting in the paint. So as I'm running down underneath the paint, I got a, guy, a defender has to always stand Behind me. Right. Every now and then, a defender would jump on this side, and if I have good contact, eye contact with my point guard, I get a, a, a shot over the top or a pass for the top. But typically, I've had some great screening bigs in my career, and being on the same accord with those bigs is, is very important. You don't see a lot of bigs setting great screens nowadays, mm -hmm. but I would always walk them in, and I'd nudge them just a little bit just to create space and then mm -hmm. take off. And depending on what he did, I always say anything he did, anything he does is the wrong decision. Because mm -hmm. if he tries to cut over the top, then I fade. If he chases me, then I curl. And then if he runs in the screen, I just pop out and I get the shot. And most importantly, I, I, my philosophy in coming off the screen was always, even though the ball's coming in my direction, doesn't mean it's my play to shoot. I got to look and see what's going to happen. So as I'm popping... A lot of times what happens is the big sees me wide open and he says, let me step out there and help. That means my big is open now. Right. So oftentimes I'm coming out of the screen, I'm passing the ball more than I'm shooting it. If I start off passing the ball, that means later on in the game I'm going to be a little bit more open. And nowadays you see the swing, too, where a guy might come from here, that extra pass that the Warriors are known for. Uh, B. Wood and, and everybody jump in. I know we got some video of Clay doing exactly that, yes. just to kind of show Smitty the kind of things we're talking about off the ball to find that space. And we're watching Clay right here as we got him circled to come off. Ray, take me through what you like what Clay does, especially at his size coming off to be able to catch some of these shots. Constant motion. You saw before he took off, he hesitated a little bit because he's watching what his guy does. He always looks over his shoulder. So you see, he, he's. Where's he at? This that's, that's Steph now. We changed okay, the right, right. Yeah, this is Steph right here. Once again, it's the same constant motion that you're talking about. He gave it up real quick, got it back, then mm -hmm. ran the baseline, was able to get to the corner. The biggest thing was never stop moving. I saw the nudge you're talking about with mm -hmm. Clay, real quick yes. nudge to get guys, guys off balance. But that constant motion is just so hard to guard. You know, one of the things that they, that they do, and I've always made sure that I did, was when I nudged the guy, sometimes – my, because this is about your your pace too. Because sometimes if you go fast the whole time, a guy can keep up with you going fast. But to slow down, you you see Steph pass the ball, and then he'll kind of mm -hmm. go into a slight jog, and then when he does that, what does the defender do? Slows down. He thinks, okay, he's out of the play, and that's the biggest mistake that everybody makes in guard, neither uh, Steph or Clay. Because the minute he slows down, that guy slows down, he takes off. Right. And now you can't keep up, and now he's open. Ray, I want to talk to you about, you know, this, this is a three-pointer <laughs> when I played. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I used to try to get right here. Yep, yep. Now this is a three-pointer. Is there a difference the way you approach a deeper three and then also versus shooting a three right here? What's your philosophy on guys, not Steph and Clay, just starting to work on threes? Is there a certain way you, you practice deeper threes versus three right at the line? I believe with, with Steph, for sure, because he's taken a, uh, so many deep threes, it's, it's almost adaptation because teams are starting to jump out and they're starting to guard him. 
And he doesn't use a lot of his legs in his shot, so he's pushing from deep. So he doesn't, if he's fatigued, he still shoots from his upper body. Uh, me, typically, I was always at the top. I would start here knowing that I would walk myself into it. You know, and then if I didn't get three, I would pump fake and get to the mid-range shot. I think a lot of guys are getting so thirsty for threes when they feel like they may be open, they're trying to launch it from that angle, from that, that distance. And I think in some cases, we talk about some guys just need to pump fake and get to that mid-range game. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did, you say, did you say the mid-range? Yeah. Because I, I know did. everybody yeah. in analytics says that's a bad shot. No, no, no it's, not, it's, it's not a bad shot. Not, I, I, it's, a, it's starting to become a lost art. You know, shout out to Sam Cassell. Terrell Brandon, you know, those yep. guys, yep. you know, getting into the, the, the mid-range, what it does, it establishes your offense and it puts pressure on the big. So as the course of the game wears on, you might gravitate towards the three-point line and have a shot, but you also have the mid-range where you can rely on that in the fourth quarter that can get you some easy buckets. Last one, Ray, real quick. The shot you have the Miami Heat. Yep. Everything everybody talked about it, you never looked down to see where you were behind the line. No. That was impressed me the most, to be able to, Come out here, never look at the line and knowing you run out of bounds and behind the line. Talk to me about that one real so, quick. So I, I work on this every single day before a game and then shoot around, like running underneath the, the paint and, you know, down on my knees and jumping up, running from half court all the way to the three-point line. So now when I talk to kids, I say, learn these lines. They're here for a reason. They're always going to be here. They don't change. So once you know them, you understand them. When you're walking and running in transition, you know where that line is because it's important. It can cost you a championship.